incredible greetings creators hello 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 incredible greetings all right so i am on facebook and youtube how at well i'll wait for a minute for you guys to kind of get on so i can explain for those who are watching over on facebook um the playback of it will be um, on YouTube. So for now, you're able to watch it on Facebook. But I need you guys to um, to start to check our YouTube channel and make sure that you guys are subscribed and you have your notification bell on because there are going to be times where I'm not going to come onto Facebook to stream lessons live. I'm trying to streamline and kind of switch some things up um, and really put content where it belongs and have certain content on certain, like you'll find certain content on certain platforms. Um, so make sure that you guys go over and subscribe to the YouTube channel, Silaholics Anonymous, as well as Honestly Speaking, because there will be things that will only be on the YouTube channel and you guys don't want to miss any of our content. So make sure that you are subscribed over there um, and you have your bell on. All right. So we are going to get started. As you guys can see on the screen, we're going to go over how to create the trending and I guess right now, um, right now in fall 2023, it's kind of like viral. A lot of people are doing uh, these shirts, which is kind of crazy that it's not happening around Mother's Day. It's, you know, in the fall and going into the holiday, which these would make great holiday gifts. It's something that's very personalized. So any mother, any grandma, nana, auntie, um, or anyone would be, uh, um, would be ecstatic to open up their gift and see these design and they're putting like the names on the sleeves little sketch hearts um this is not something that's new it has been done oh wait a minute you know what hold on i probably sound very distant hold on yep because i'm on the wrong microphone all right there we go it should sound a whole lot better now um, hello, 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 everyone. So as I was saying, uh, this is something, this design style is not something that is new. It's been used for like wifey, hubby. It's been used for grad things. But right now, a lot of people are being introduced to it through the mama sweatshirt design. So we're going to go over how to create this in like the effect in Silhouette Studio. And then as far as getting the arch, I'm gonna show you a couple of different places where you can create that arch, including a free uh, resource to be able to create that um, and some things that you may already have on your computer. All right, so I'm just going to, I gotta share this out real quick. As you guys come in, drop a hey, how you doing? Let me know. Um, who is on, where you guys are watching from. And let's see, I'm going to go over here. I got to go find my post. Uh, all right, so let's update this. Um, edit post. All righty, hold on. All righty. So let's go ahead and put this here. Boom. They can uh, find this video. And let's make sure that the one over on Facebook is actually playing or it's actually set to the right audience. Let's see. Oh, wait, am I on the wrong? Which one am I on? Nope, I'm on Shaquille LaBelle. 
I don't know why it's not playing though. I don't see my live video. So guys, just bear with me. Um, I don't see the live video. I'm not sure what happened. Uh, why is it not playing over on Facebook? Oh, probably because I was right at 610. All right, let's see. Let's remove that. And then let's add it back. Now let's see if we can find that over on Facebook. Welcome, welcome in everyone. Okay, well, you guys see my screen. You have to wait over here, okay? Um, let's see. I don't know why my live video isn't playing. Okay, there we go. I think that's it. All right, so edit audience, public, there we go. All right, cool beans. We are all set up and ready to go. All right, hello everyone. I am Shakia, the professor of HS Inc. 365, home of Honestly Speaking, Silaholics Anonymous, and 365 Creative Academy. You can check out our eight, almost nine years of free content over on Silaholics Anonymous on YouTube. If you're watching this from Facebook, if you're on YouTube, you are in the right place. Just make sure that you guys subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you are notified whenever I go live or drop any content and you don't miss out. I'm also subscribed to our Honestly Speaking YouTube channel for demos of different types of like the final project the actual, actual process, uh, once you finish your design, sign up, uh, I'm sorry, subscribe and hit the bell for that type of content over on Honestly Speaking, S-P-I-N-K-I-N-G. Um, also visit our website, shop.hsing365.com to enroll in trainings and classes that we host through our academy site, 365 Creative Academy. So I did kind of like a precursor. We talked about it a little bit. Now we have a few more people on. Um, what we're going to go over today or what we're going to learn today is the very much trending. And let me just switch it over for you guys. All right, so you guys can see what we're gonna do over on TikTok. So the very trending and like I said, like I said, kind of sort of viral right now design, which is the mama design. And they're putting like auntie, wifey, just any, like you can really do any phrase, any name, and you can do it with any font. It's actually really, really easy to do. Most of you guys who use Silhouette Studio probably use these tools all the time, but you're just not making the connection that it is the same exact tools when you're looking at this design. So this is gonna help kind of bridge that gap and you're gonna see how some of the tools that you use all the time can create so many different things and you're gonna get totally different outcomes uh, depending on how you use that tool and what it is that you're trying to create, all right? So as I said, we are going to use Silhouette Studio. That is my uh, design program of choice. I love to design in Silhouette Studio. It is a standalone graphics designing software. Yes, it is the software that you need to create and put your cut lines and be able to send your designs to your Silhouette Cameo, Portrait, Curio, Mint, um, Alpha, those types of machines. But it is a decent standalone graphic designing software. It is a vector based. I know that I, I know um, it is a vector based software. Um, but it has some um, kind of like Photoshop esque tools and functions in there that you can use as well, all right? We're gonna focus more so on the vector designing part of Silhouette Studio and bringing in different uh, file types. I'm gonna show you like uh, how to trace it and whatnot if you have the free version of Silhouette Studio, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and jump into this. All right, so you guys are seeing my, you should be seeing my silhouette screen now. And there's a couple of different options here. I do wanna let you guys know, I'm trying out something new. Um, 
I'm really trying to read, you know, just to figure out how, like the direction we want to take the Academy in for 2024. So we're trying out a couple of different things. Some of you guys know that we are doing the design challenges, uh, challenge number six and seven. They are up where we kind of do a I do, you do, we do type deal. Not everybody needs that. We're trying to figure out like a middle ground. So I want to try out what's called study hall. I'm going to do it. It's not going to always be like three days straight for the same type of um same type of project or design, but I want to kind of try this out Monday through Wednesday. So if you go over to our website, you can sign up for the study hall and I'm going to show you some additional ways to um, accomplish this. It's not quite like the challenges where we're going to do the I do, we do, you do setup, but you'll be able to ask questions if you got stuck, but it has to be about this type of design. And I'm going to show you different designs, um, different ways of doing this. So every day I'm going to show a different version um, at the start of study hall. And then you guys can come in, ask questions. If you just want that kind of like one-on-one -on -one help, personalized help, if you're getting stuck somewhere and it's just not quite working out with like, maybe you're using a different font. That's what these study hall sessions are going to be for, for you guys to come in, ask your questions, um, or just learn from other people's questions. And like I said, I'm going to start each one off with showing a different way of doing um, this particular design. This is a tester situation, but if you want to be a part of this beta testing, head over to the website and you'll see the thumbnail for the study hall, okay? All right. For today, we are going to use two... Well, two free softwares, but if you have Photoshop or Illustrator already, do not, you don't have to go and, you know, start using the second site that I'm going to show, unless you maybe want to stop your Photoshop um, or Illustrator subscription. But I am going to show you guys a free site that is, you know, really, really close to how you operate Photoshop. All right. Um, so Silhouette Studio and that website is Photo P, all right? There are going to be some ads and things on the side. It's not, um, you can kind of create an account. Everything that's here, you're going to be able to use freely. I am going to show you guys how to do this in Photoshop if you have Photoshop, um, as well as like Illustrate. It's pretty much the same thing. So we're going to show a couple different softwares in this particular live training. Uh, everything except um, Affinity. I don't use Affinity 2, and I think that's the one that has the warp in it. And I'm not a huge fan of uh, Affinity. So we're not going to do that. We're going to use Silhouette Studio, Photo P, Photoshop, Illustrator, and Microsoft Word. So if you already have Word, Photoshop or Illustrator, you have everything that you need, of course, including Silhouette Studio. If you don't have Photoshop or Illustrator, you can use Photo P, okay? Photo and then like P, like the green thing that you eat, P-E-A, all together. You can just do a Google search for that, all right? So let's go over first the fundamental principles of creating this design, okay? Okay. We're going to go over the fundamental principles of creating this design. All right. I'm going to just type out a word. So we're going to do Team 365. Who here is a part of Team 365? Whether you have purchased a class via 365 Creative Academy or you use our Sublimation ink and paper. Who here is a part of Team 365? Actually, I'm going to use Impact because that's an easy font. And normally everyone, like everyone usually has that one. All right. I see a couple hands over here on TikTok. Woohoo! All right. We got a me over here. We got another one on TikTok who's a part of Team 365. Okay. Okay. We got, a, I see a few more. All right. All right. All right. Okay. So we're going to start off with Impact font, right? And for this, you're going to use things like offset, compound paths, and subtracting. Like those are the three main tools and functions to be able to create these types of designs. All right. So um, did I say offset? Text, wait, um, offsetting, subtracting, <coughs> and compound paths. 
Yeah. Okay. I said them all. So I'm just going to fill this in with some color. If you wanted your text to, you know, be spread out a little bit more where you have individual lines, like around everything, you can use the, um, go to the A on the right hand side and you're going to adjust your character spacing to add more space in between. And then on the right hand side, again, you're going to go over to the offset tool. It looks like a little star. That tool actually kind of lets you, like it already is kind of letting you know, like, hey, hey, pick me, pick me. I'm what you need because that tool, you see a solid star in the middle. Then there is a star kind of like blue, like a little gap. And then there is another star, like another white one on the outside. So if you pay attention to the icons, they really tell you like, hey, this might be a tool to accomplish this. So that one already says, pick me, pick me, pick me. I'm the tool you need. All right. So we're going to go to offset and you're going to click on offset. You're gonna make that offset or as big or as small as you want it to be. And you'll choose rounded or corner. So we're gonna take this up. And I'm going to hit apply. I'm going to fill this in with color. Technically, this is all you guys needed to learn how to do. When it comes to layering vinyl, you can do it one of two ways. You can leave your background solid. Certain vinyls can be layered right, like one on top of the other. Caesar's glitter vinyl, their smooth vinyl, um, the flock one, I believe also can, like I know that one can be layered. Now, if you're gonna do puff, that's a little bit different. You really can't layer puff. Whenever you're doing puff, you want that to be the last one that you are doing. So it's not like you can do like the puff like three or four different places. Like you want that to be the last thing that you do so that you're not reapplying heat on top of it. If you have to do different color, if you want to do different colors, you just got to make sure you cut down that uh, carrier sheet so that it's not underneath like uh, an element that's next to it. All right, but this is really all that you need. You can do a solid background. Or if you want to cut that out so that both pieces of vinyl, so if you're going to do basically like an outline, and then you want to have like, let's say the puff on top or vice versa. You want the middle part to be solid and you want the outline to be puff. You're going to want to create an opening in those letters, like what's in the back. So in this case, from the orange, you want to, sorry, the yellow, you want to create an opening based off of the orange. How you do that is select the entire thing. You're going to come back to the panel on the right hand side and go to your modify panel. On your modify panel, it really depends on how you set it up and what you did um, to the to the elements, whether or not you made them a compound path, group them together, X, Y and Z. Um, that can be really, really important if you're using subtract. For this one though, just to make it easy across the board and so that you can have both elements at the end and be able to cut them from different uh, colors or different types of vinyl, we're gonna use subtract all. A lot of people, um, like let's say when you hear the word subtract all, some people process that as subtract all of the elements that you want, right? So you're going to, like, they're still going to subtract. But subtract all is a different function. So if you ever hear someone say that in a, um, in a video, a tutorial, a class of some sort, those are two different, um, two different functions. Subtract is here. Subtract all is here. So when I say subtract all, I'm not saying select all of it and subtract choose the subtract all function. So if we click on that, 
it's going to look like nothing has changed. All right, we're gonna click off and then click on the orange. If I move that down, I now have my outline. Instantly have your outline. So this would be a cut of vinyl, whether it is HTV or uh, smooth HTV, glitter HTV, puff HTV, you know, whichever vinyl you're using. And this would also be um, one. You can also do this where your middle section is sublimation with honestly speaking sublimation paper that will allow you to press this at 365 for 30 seconds. And because you're able to sublimate um, at a lower temperature and time, and it's going to be a full on um, a sublimation, it's going to fully transfer. You can then go over that with vinyl and you don't have to worry about your print like your sublimation print fading. So this can be a combination of vinyl and sublimation as well, all right? So now that we understand what we have to do, once you have the, the shape that you want, we're gonna work on creating that shape, okay? That shows you what you need to do. You need to have your initial text, whether it's gonna come in as an SVG, if you have designer, designer plus or business, or if you bring in a PNG or a JPEG, you're going to trace it to vectorize it. And then you're going to do those exact same steps. You're going to put an offset around it and then subtract all. Okay. Before we get into the next part of this, please make sure that you guys have given this, you've given this video a thumbs up. If you're watching over on YouTube, click out of the live chat. You're going to see where you can give this video a thumbs up. Don't leave. Uh, today without giving this video a thumbs up, consider sharing with someone. If you're watching over on TikTok, go ahead, power tap, double, double, double tap that screen, please. Um, and also while you guys are outside of the live chat, make sure that you guys are subscribed and you have your notification bell turned to on. If you are just joining, we're going to go back over this. So you haven't missed it. We're going to do another example because I have to still show you how to create the curve. But I want to take this opportunity to show you guys. So we're going to come over here, come over to our website. If we have our challenges, challenge six and seven, uh, challenge six is not this Saturday, not tomorrow. It's next week, Saturday. And challenge seven is November 4th. You can go to our website and get more information about those. All right. And get VIC access for 563. I am trying out something new because I just want to kind of see the different learning styles and what you guys benefit from. Some people may not need a full class. They'll just need like a little study hall session just to make sure that they have the concept, you know, correct. So we're trying out something next week, Monday through Wednesday. Not every time it's going to be three days, uh, but this particular time I am doing it over three days because each day I'm going to show a different way that you can do the mama design. It's not a design challenge. We're not doing the I do, we do, you do. Um, it's more of a I'm going to show it and then if you can, I'm going to be on. You can try it out yourself and I will be there to help you along the way and answer any questions. So this is a study Hall. You are actually doing the work and it is for you to get additional help live and it's a lunchtime live. So we're trying that out. Okay. You can attend one or all three sessions. If you are free at 12 noon, Eastern standard time, you can just come hang out with us. All right. So it's on our site. It's 563 to attend the study hall. All right. Um, so just wanted to point that out to you guys, as well as our 30 day training. If you are brand new to Silhouette Studio, um, if you are just getting into and you're learning that you can use this for designing for sublimation to set up your DTF prints and things of that nature, we have a 30 day training that goes through all of the essential tools and functions and it breaks it down on a beginner level. You will really understand not just the how, but the why of each of each one of these essential tools and functions. We taught it over the course of 30 days. You don't have to take 30 days and you also don't have to watch the videos in order. Once you sign up, you have access to all 30 days and you can watch them in any order you choose. But we do recommend that you watch day one through four in order and you can pretty much get through those 
um, all in like one day because they're really, really short sessions. But make sure you go through those. And after you do day one through four, you can skip around if you want to kind of jump to tracing, if you feel like you need more help in that, if you feel like you need more help in edit points or replicate a line, you can jump around. But we do recommend watching day one through four. And we have had a few students that said they watch day one through four and then they jump to the last couple of days going over the designing. They wanted to see the different types of designs that can be made um, in Silhouette Studio and that helped them then go back to the day that like um, corresponded with that particular design um, or that technique in that design and that helped them. So you can choose to learn. Um, you can choose to learn however, you know, whatever works best for you with the 30-day training, okay? You can customize it to, to your learning style. All right, we're going to go, uh, actually, I'll ask you guys, which software do you guys want to see first? Microsoft Word, Photoshop, Illustrator, or PhotoP? Which do you want to see first? Microsoft Word, Photoshop, Illustrator, or PhotoP? All right, I see one for Illustrator. I see a vote for Word. I see a vote for Photoshop. I see a vote for Word. I see one for Photo P. I see a Photoshop over here, Photoshop. So we have three for Photoshop. Wait, one, two, three, three for Photoshop, one for Illustrator, two for Word, two for Photo P. Okay, we got another Photoshop, another Photoshop. It right, looks like Photoshop is in the lead. Then I see another photo P, one, two, three for photo P, four for photo P, five for photo P. All right, so let's see. Then we only have, I think Illustrator is probably gonna be the last one that we do. Not too many people are utilizing Illustrator. So it looks like we'll go Photoshop, photo P, Word, and then Illustrator, okay? Photoshop, photo P, Word, and then Illustrator is the order that we're gonna go in. All right. Photoshop and Photo P really are the same thing. They really are the same, <clears throat> the same um, function. So that's kind of good that they're going to be back to back. All right. We're now going to start the Photoshop portion of this. And as you can see, I have a different word here. I'm just going to start a new page. My Photoshop is acting kind of funky. So we're going to see what happens here. New. I'm gonna, since I don't have a challenge this weekend, I'm gonna take this opportunity to um, clean up some of the things on this computer that might be bogging it down. All right, so I'm just gonna go select this one. Doesn't really matter. This is just for uh, teaching purposes. So I'm not really creating a design with this. So I wasn't worried about like the size. All right, now that we have this open, you're gonna to go to the left-hand side and you're gonna click on the T, which is for text, okay? And I just kind of drew a box and in all caps, I'm gonna go M-A, oops, let's select all. I said select all, there we go, M-A, M-A. I'm gonna click off. I don't need all that. Hey, 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 stop it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Dude, seriously? What's going on here? All right, control T. So I can change this and make it a little bit bigger. It is really delayed. I have no idea what's going on with my Photoshop. 
Hello. Okay, it's thinking. Hmm. I said control T. There we go. I just want this to be a little bit bigger. Okay, so you guys can see it. Probably needs to be a little bit bigger than that also. Okay, there we go. And you're going to now choose your font. So over here in um, my properties window, I can click on this. And there's a couple of different um, college type fonts. There's college black, there's varsity, there's jersey, there's collegiate black. Um, so if we just go jersey. Turn. Sorry, y'all. I have no idea why it's moving so slow. So there's like, there's Jersey. Um, then I'm going to go, what is the other one? Varsity. But you don't have to use those fonts. You can use literally any font. You want to stand out and there's a font that you like, like you really, really like the shape of it. You can use that font as well. You do not have to use um any type of collegiate type font because you're going to, you know how to add the offset. This will work with any font and your designs can stand out from the next person because you're not using the same font. They are hello. Okay. You're really starting to make me mad. Some of the fonts already have the lines around them, but they may not be at the thickness that you want them to be. So that's something that you have to end up doing in silhouette. You can't really do that like in Photoshop to adjust that. Come on. I'm about to go to Photo P because Photoshop is really bugging right now. Okay, there we go. So we have that, right? You're then going to warp this. All right. Um, okay. I'm going to go over here to text. So you, I want to be on the text and I'm, come on. I clicked on the warp text at the top and it's going to open up this window. You're going to choose arch. And there's some other ones as well. You can play around with those if you would like. And for the bend, you're going to move that towards the center or back towards the right to adjust the bend. This is what's making this video a lot longer than it needs to be. So there, or I'm going to come on this side and go and put like over exaggerate the bend. You have to be very careful with how you're setting it up because it's going to change the end, like how it warps and kind of comes down. You're going to change the shape of the letter. This part is totally up to you. There is no right or wrong to this. All right, I'm just going to leave this like this because it's going to drive me absolutely bonkers. So I'm just going to hit um, OK. As long as this is in as still as a text, you can save this as an SVG and be able to open up that SVG in Silhouette Studio to put the offset on it so that you can cut it. Could you do strokes and things like that in Photoshop? Yes, but that's not going to give you your cut lines. 
because you are setting this up to cut from vinyl, you want to be able to have it set up in a way where it's going to read in your cut software. Whether you are using Leonardo Design Studio, Silhouette Studio, Cricut Design Space, you know, you're using a Cricut machine, a Silhouette machine, a, a Caesar, a Brother, uh, Starcraft Solo, it doesn't matter which cutter you're using. All you really need is the words arched and everything else can be done from that software, okay? So we're going to um, export this. I'm gonna go File, Export, and I'm gonna go to Export Preferences. For those of you who have Photoshop, SVG may not show up in your export options if you're not using like legacy um, options. So when you go to preference, there's going to be a little thing at the bottom whenever this pops up that's going to say use legacy or something of that nature. Hold on. I forget what the exact words are. So it's going to come up. You have to have that check. So right here. Yeah. Use legacy um, export as. That must be checked in order for you to see the SVG option. All right. So that must be checked. We're going to go ahead and hit um, OK on this because I already did it. And you're going to go export. Because it's going to save it as an SVG, you don't have to worry about all the extra around it. But if you save it as a PNG, you are going to want to maybe make it a little bit bigger to make it easier to trace when you get it to the other software. OK, or like in Silhouette Studio, if you have version 4.4 or 4.5, it has what's called automatic PNG trace and it will just trace it for you. So I'm going to go file, export, export as it's going to bring up another window. And there you're going to um, select as I'm not I'm not going to go through. See, look, it's acting dumb. So, yeah, something's going on with my actual Photoshop. I don't know what's going on in here. Did I get a virus on my Photoshop or something? I knew it wasn't me. I'm like, what the heck is going on? All right. So anyway, you would just go file, I mean, export, export as. You would choose SVG, title it, and then save it. Mine is acting cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. I'm not about to stress over Photoshop and let that stress me out or extend this tutorial um, longer than it needs to be. But Export as on the drop down because PNG or JPEG might show up. Click on that drop down, choose SVG. Do not rasterize it, it has to still be in text format in order to save that as an SVG. So now we're just going to go ahead and go on over to Photo P. It's going to be pretty much the same thing. You're going to um, grab the text tool on the Left hand side, you're going to put your text. Um, you're going to type out your text. And once you have it typed out, right here at the top, it's going to say warp. You're going to click on that and you're going to get pretty much what the, the same type of options that are in Photoshop. And you're going to choose Arch. So I'm going to just change it just so you can see it. So I'm going to go um, Arch, Arc to the bottom. So there's arc and then there's arch. So I'm going to do lower arc. And now I'm going to click on this and I'm going to go to arch. And same thing, you would move the bend to define like to make that like really, really exaggerated or bring it down. And this is free to use. This is free to use. It is a web-based photo editing um, program, okay? And we're gonna hit okay. Same thing over here. So we're gonna go file, export as, you have the option to export as an SVG, PDF, JPEG, PNG. So you would go ahead and save that. I'm gonna change mine just so that you can see the difference. We're gonna go team, 365 down. 
this uh, software, you can use like the fonts that they have. You can always load a font. They also, you can also do like local fonts. All right. So I'm going to go with my one that I use for my logo. Uh oh. Hey, 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 hey. What the heck? Team 365. Um. All right. I'm going to click back on the T so that I can get back to warp right here. And I wanna drop that sum, okay? Because this has more letters, it's gonna look different. So I wanna drop that a little bit and I'm just gonna hit okay. So I'm gonna go file, export. I'm gonna choose SVG, SVG. We're gonna do team 365 live trend. Okay. And save. I'm going to come back over to Silhouette Studio. I'm just going to open up a new window. And we're going to go file. You can either go file open, it'll just open it up. Or because I have a new window here, I'm just going to go file merge. And I'm going to see me bring in a couple different ones. So Team 365 Live, it is going to show either a Internet Explorer, a Google Chrome. It might show Safari. Whatever Internet browser you use, it's what it's going to show when you have an SVG because it doesn't have um, like a preview or something like Silhouette or PNG, JPEG, stuff like that. So, yes, that is how it's supposed to look unless you've assigned it to like Illustrator or Affinity and things like that. So we're just going to click on that and go, okay. See, now that's in there and I double click. I have edit points. That means it's ready to cut. It's ready to offset. If I bring in a PNG, so now I'm going to go merge. I'm going to bring in the PNG that I created earlier from photo P. Um, the Photoshop one is around there somewhere. So here is the PNG. With the PNG, you have a lot of extra around it, okay? So you would have to trace this down. We're going to come back to this as far as tracing. Illustrator, oh, wait, let's say Illustrator Word. Okay, we're just going to go to Illustrator. Much of the same thing, right? You're going to start off with your text. And we're going to go... Um, wifey, this one is collegiate black, but we're going to choose, um, a different font. Let's do Rockwell. That's another one that has, no, not you. Let's see. Rockwell, extra bold. Oh, and let's make you all caps. Okay, so you can do wifey. You can do glamma. You can do nana. You can do gma. You can do g. I don't know if they do it g e e or g g. Um, but whatever title you want to put on there. So I'm just gonna go wifey. Okay, you're going to come on, come off of that. All right, and I'm going to go effect. Wait, why are you? Oh, wait, I need to go into text. Come on. Um, 
Wait a minute. Oh, there we go. Text warp. There we go. Come on. Not that one. Oh, not tech. I'm tripping. I'm, it's not warp over here. It's envelope. So we're going to go to... Why is my warp not coming up? Why is my text warp not coming up? Come on. What's going on? Okay, there we go. I was like, why didn't I see it before? Up here, right at the top. So it's going to say make envelope, but it's basically like warping. So there is the icon right there. I didn't know I wasn't coming up before. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to get basically the same tool. And we're going to choose arch. Um, you can make it whatever, whichever one you want. And we're going to take it, bend it up or come down. If you go on the other side of it, it's going to start to do it the opposite direction. Okay, you have lower arch or arch, arc lower, arc upper, and it'll be flat at the bottom. Um, arch is more like doing it um, kind of like curve, covering your text. And so we're just going to go to arch and I'm going to hit OK. And then, of course, you would save that same way, save it in either PNG or as an SVG file to bring over into your design software. The last one, you won't be able to get that same look where it's rounded at the top and rounded underneath, like not quite. In Microsoft Word, you're going to use your Word art. So we're going to click off and we're going to come over to insert and you're going to see Word art. You're going to click on that. You're going to choose one. You don't really need anything to it, which we can always change later. And let's see. We're going to go all caps. T. Remove this down here. Actually, I can get rid of Niners. All right. You're going to... Click on that, highlight it. You're going to see the options come up as far as the fonts. I'm going to use, um, let's use closeness. That's another one that I like. Another like big, bold font. All right. And then I'm going to go up here to where it says text effects. I don't want the shadow, so I'm going to go no shadow. And then I'm going to come down here to transform and you have all of these different options here. Okay. So this one is supposed to be kind of like that curved at the top, but it, it really curves your ends around. So it looks a little funky sometimes when you are using this one, there's wavy text in here, bulge. This is more like the arc because it'll do the bottom. And then this is the top. So there's a lot of different options here. Um, that one is, again, flat. This is if you're having multiple rows. So going out like this, going up. All right. So there's a lot of different options. I'm just going to go with that one, but I don't like that font. So let's go with... Um, All right. If you have the free version of Silhouette Studio, you will not be able to save this as a PDF. You have to take a screenshot of this. OK, so I'm going to go and open up my snipping tool for Mac users. However, you do screenshots is what you will do. I'm going to go new. 
And I'm just going to take a screen grab of this. I do it in black because Silhouette loves to trace black. But however your software, I think with Cricut Design Space, you'll be able to like move, remove the white and stuff from around it. Leonardo, you can remove the background or remove all that stuff. However you remove backgrounds or make it into a vector file and what, like whatever cutting software you use, you will do that. But in Silhouette Studio, we're going to have to trace. Now, if you have designer edition, designer plus, or business edition, you can save it as a PDF and then open it up in Silhouette Studio um, and it's ready to cut. I don't know if Leonardo Design Studio opens up PDFs. I know Cricut Design Space does not, um, but Silhouette Studio will open up a PDF and it's just like opening up an SVG, okay? So we're gonna go file, um, export, and I'm going to go create Adobe PDF. It's going to tell me I have to save it first. So, yes, I want to save the file first. And we're going to go mama, auntie, um, layered outline tutorial. Okay, I'm going to just put in my downloads. I'm going to hit save. So it is creating that PDF file. I'm going to go ahead and come over to Silhouette Studio. All right, so there's that. I'm going to come to Silhouette Studio. I'm going to go file, open, open up that PDF file. When you get, oh, this window won't let me bring, it won't let me bring it over. But there's a window that's going to pop up and it's going to say current page. Do you want to open it at import as a vector or import as an image? You want to leave it on import as a vector and leave group checked. It won't let me bring this window onto this screen over here. So I'm just going to go import. Make sure you import it as a vector. Once you import it as a vector, I'm going to ungroup it, double click. I have edit points. I don't need this. See, I have edit points. It's ready to offset. It's ready to cut, resize. So you can do it that way or bring it in. You know, if you have a, um, if you have the free version, well, you won't be able to do it with the version because it's not going to open up because it's a PDF. Free version, you take a screenshot of it, all right? So I'm going to come back, or I'm going to just take this one and go paste. Here is the screenshot. I recommend making this as big, you know, making it a lot bigger, not say big as possible because you can make it so, so big. You're then going to go over to trace, place your box around it. It's going to pick up on that black immediately, and you're going to go trace. Boom, it's done. All right, we're going to release Compound Path. If you are enrolled in the 30-day training, you know the trick to avoid the Compound Path. If you don't know, go back and watch the Trace video. There is a trick to avoid the uh, release Compound Path. So we're going to put color on those. And now we can offset. You make, again, make this as big or as small as you would like for it to be. Once you have your outline, you're going to select the outline and the text. You're gonna go over to modify and subtract all if you want the cutout, okay? And that will give you the outline for whatever vinyl you're gonna use, and then you still have your middle part to do whatever media you wanna use for that, or you can leave it where it's just layered on top. If I'm doing glitter HTV, or if I'm doing just um, regular smooth HTV, I like to literally layer it on top. If you're doing puff, 
Puff must be the last thing that you do so that you don't reapply heat and pressure to it and mess up the puff. All right. So we showed all the different ways, showed you how to actually accomplish the, um, the style as far as getting your outline, your outline and then layering your words. And as we demonstrated, you can use Photoshop, Illustrator, Photo P or Microsoft Word to create your warped or um, transform text. I love learning from you. You are truly the best. Thank you so much, Rhonda. Um, let's see. I don't have Photoshop and I found Photo P a few months ago and have been using it to open Photoshop files. It's been working great for me. Yes, you can open up Photoshop files in Photo P. Uh, but I still love Silhouette for my designing. Uh, what's the shape of style call? There are different ones. So the Team 365 and the Mama, mm -hmm. I use the art, arch. <laughs> I use the, almost uh, uh, choked on my spit. I use the arch for those in um word they don't have an arch they have different um word art shapes so you would just select that but for this particular style right here that was arch whether you are in photo p or if you're in um illustrator and using the um text envelope or if you're in photoshop it's called art I mean, sorry, arch. So this one is arch. This one is arc, arc lower, arc upper. The one that I use is called arch to get that look that you're seeing on the sweatshirts. Um, I'm pretty sure Inkscape does work. I don't use Inkscape, so I cannot give you a tutorial on that, but Inkscape should work as well. It's kind of like a illustrator, so it should have a warp or envelope function to it as well. The font does not really matter. You can literally use any font you want, any font. Uh, you have Photoshop 7, no option for saving as an SVG. Oh, you have a standalone software. You don't have the cloud. So yeah, you would just save yours as a PNG and then bring it into your software and trace it out. Now, also make sure that you check your um, offset preferences. So I did show that you would have to watch the playback over on YouTube somewhere probably around like 45 minutes or so, um, probably somewhere in there or maybe like 40 minutes, but it's in there where I showed where to go in Photoshop under export and you can go to the legacy save as and it may have SVG there. So that is the end of it. I showed you every possible way, um, no matter which software you have. Of course, we always come back to, well, for me, I come back to Silhouette Studio because I use Cameos to cut, but you'll be able to do this in whatever software you use. Just bring that file in and however that software tells you to um, trace it down or if it automatically does a PNG trace, um, or if, when you bring in that SVG, however you put the offset on it um, or outline on it in those softwares, that is what you will do. I will say, I will let you know, like if you're using Cricut Design Space, they actually now have a subtract option, but you lose the top. So that would be a, a situation where you use slice and that way you can keep the original and you keep the outline as well. So that's when you would use slice if you're using Cricut Design Space. Any questions before we log off? Remember that we do have the study session. This is something I'm, I'm sorry, study hall. I'm trying this out because I wanna see about doing study halls once we get back into the programs, um, our, our learning and design programs, kind of like lunchtime lives. Just wanna kind of see if there is an audience there, those who are available around that time of day, lunchtime for me, so like 12 noon. 
Um, so it's on our website. It's three. We're going to do it over the course of three days. I just kind of want to get a gauge and see um, how many people are showing up um, each day. So if you would like um, more hands on, if you're not quite getting something, if you're not quite figuring out photo P or Photoshop, it's not giving you the results. Um, or you want to see three additional ways that this can be done, three additional styles, <clears throat> excuse me, um, to create these. Let's go here. So there we go. This is the one that we did today. And like I said, you can do it with glitter, HTV. You can do it with sublimation with a glitter like fill background and then put your, uh, your puff vinyl, whichever combination you want to use. But we're going to go over, um, over the course of those three days, three additional ways to set up um, this trending design. So you can head over to our website. The link for it is in the description of this video. Um, and this is what the thumbnail will look like for a study hall session, um, just for hands-on, be able to ask questions about the tools and functions to create this type of design and learn three additional ways to um, create this design with you know whatever font, whatever words you choose to use. Any questions for me, last call, any questions before I log off? Or was this, this covered everything, right? How many of you guys by show of hands can agree that this free live training cover just about everything for beginners to be able to create this design by show of hands. Anyone agree with me? As a beginner, you should be able to follow along. If you get stuck, you can leave a comment. Um, um, try and be as detailed as possible in that comment or attend the study hall session. Oh, okay. I'm hoping that it's a delay. I'm hoping there's a delay in you guys responding. Was there anything that was not clear? Because I'm not seeing enough hands for my liking for the number of people that are watching. Is there something that was not clear in the demonstration? Yeah, I pop up, Kimberly. You can watch the playback over on YouTube. Okay, you logged in late. All right. Thank you, Samantha. Okay, maybe it's just a delay in y'all hearing that part. <laughs> clear, thank you, clear as always. Okay, I agree, I agree. All right, cool beans. All right, just wanted to make sure. All right, well, I thank you guys so very much for joining me this evening. Um, I look forward to seeing some of you guys in study hall. Until next time, have a great one. Continue to unlock your creativity and be incredible. Peace.